Oh, such good puppies. Hi there. How are you? I'm so sorry we're running late again. Um, oh, you know, it's because of Easter. That's why. Yeah, I'm so sorry. But thank you for joining us. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, Myra and her puppies are doing great. Um, I was going to pop up because it's been oh. talked to them. Oh, okay. Do you want me to uh, pick the puppies up so you can lay that down? Yes, please. That'd be helpful. Come here, um, puppies. So, so you guys can kind of see me. Um, so the puppies are, uh, um, we did their 48 hour waits last night and um, at their 24 hour check-in, they had all but um, Rose here, all of them lost weight. Um, some of them lost up to 20 grams. It was pretty significant. Um, but when we did their check-in. <laughs> just one, just one, just one, just one. <laughs> when we did their check-in. Um, Last night, we saw that um, everybody had brought their weights back up. Yay, yeah. puppies. Hooray, puppies, bringing their weights back up. Yeah, That's and they're okay. such big, strong don't, puppies. Don't worry, Myra. I'm going to bring them back. Um, and Daisy's been over here licking butts and pottying the puppers. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Go, go, Myra. It's okay. She's just... I know. Myra. She's... I know. Yeah, over here. Yeah, it might be worry. easier to see the puppies on this blanket if I at least have it's it okay. right it's side okay. up. Right. Uh, okay. Oh, and I also realized the last couple of days I forgot to read Chris's updates. I am so sorry, guys. I feel terrible. Um, during the whelping stream was one thing, but I feel really bad that I forgot yesterday morning. And oh. so I will be sure to read Chris's update. Oh. Um, Drew and I, we did want to take a moment to thank everybody because, um, you know, we started our fundraising effort, um, I think it was March 6th was our first fundraising live stream. And, um, we don't make a lot of money on the live streams. We make, um, about, it comes, to, it works out to be like between two and $4 for every 1000 views. And so in any given live stream is usually like $4, sometimes $5. Um, and so we decided for, um, to help Amelia and her family. Come here, Meyer, we got a poo coming out. Oh boy. We got a poo. See the poo? Yeah. Um, so we decided to crank up the ads um, and ask everybody who was willing to um, watch there. ads and let this play so that we donate the revenue because a lot of people wanted to support but um you know with when in hard times is terrible right now and so we thought oh, well, that was a good way to but app so i can share with you guys just how how awesome it's gone yeah you guys have been amazing <laughs> yeah. so like so for February, our revenue for the month was 312. January, also 312. December, 375 for a little bit of context. For March, we still have two days. We have um, yesterday and today to calculate. But for March so far, we're at 578. And so we're already like well beyond that $300 threshold that we usually sit at. Um, and so... Um, you can even see on the, this is, that big spike is the whelping live stream. Um, but the whelping live stream was $81.15. You guys, thank you for sitting through the ads. Thank you for tolerating them. Thank you for all the super chats, super thanks, super, 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 um, Super stickers. Yeah, super stickers, all those things. Thank you guys so much for um, for all of your your time and your donations because that's gonna make a big difference for Amelia's family because they I mean, Amelia went through a lot this month. And with how the vet was just kind of planning on letting her go and um she she needed all of that to just just to have a fighting chance. And so the fact that she even survived is incredible. And so uh, we really want to help the Adkins be able to 
I'll be able to pay for it because this stuff is, is does not come cheap. Um, but so we're at 578 for March and then we're at 796 for um, uh, the Amelia's Army merchandise and RBC merchandise, but um, from our merch shop. And our total is at, uh, I put it in the description, but I think it's 1374. So we're at almost $1,400. I'm so excited. Um, I, can't, I can't wait to, to give it to them. Um, I'm not sure the right word, but I just can't um, for them to see for themselves. So um, just thank you guys for helping us to do this because it's been a lot of you than us. Um, but so anyway, so uh, we and like I said, each individual live stream doesn't earn that much money, and so we realized to do more of a marathon. <laughs> um, and so our initial idea was to just we'll do okay every night she's in the ICU, we'll um, do a fundraiser li live stream for that day. And um, but you know she was discharged and she was still very sick and still lots of bills, and so we didn't want to end it yet. Um, and then we were like, well, you know, we started this on the sixth. Why, why are we cutting out like the first, second, third, fourth, fifth? Why not just include those days, you know, because, you know, it's still also, again, not very much money because we had the ads down low. But it's we decided in the end to just donate the month of March. So all of our March revenue that um, across our channel. So not just the fundraising live streams, um, to be, like I said, to do an individual live stream isn't going to be that much money. Um, and so we then decided um, to just do the month of March, and that is more of a chunk they can do something with. Um, and then we also had Myra's Delivery in there, which gave you guys something exciting to watch. Through <laughs> um, usually, when people do fundraisers, there's something to it. You know, you get something out of it. So um, yeah, think of the, the PBS uh, fundraiser. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was public um, broadcasting. But it was nice to have that. Um, have her delivery to oh. kind of um, have a finale with. Um, and so in the next couple of days, we'll see what our mm -hmm. revenue is for March and we'll be able to tell you what the final number is. Um, and we're still, the revenue that is generated today is going to be part of that donation. So we'll know tomorrow what the total is. Um, but that's also before taxes. Um, they do take taxes out. It's not very much, but um, I think like last time it was like $12. But um, there will be some taxes taken out. So we will share everything with you. Um, like something that matter. Um, but we're just we're we're so excited. We in fact let me catch us up on the updates. Oh, and I also noticed on our Facebook page we had um, it looked like a coordinated troll attack, and I couldn't figure out how to block them through Safari. And so we had these trolls on our Facebook page. I apologize. Um, John F. Kennedy was one of them. John F. Kennedy <laughs> was the troll. And even um, Terry Carney responded and was like, "I have a three-year-old cavalier from RBC, hoping to get another from RBC." Because he was like, "Can't see it anymore," because I blocked him. But he was like, I, uh, "There was one person who was like." I've seen friends like this, and I don't want to see you get scammed. Join our group. Um, but they were they were hawking their um, rehoming group. Um, it wasn't a rescue group. It was like it was like rehoming puppies. I don't know. Was, uh, I didn't really look uh, into it. Hmm. Uh, like I didn't go into the group, but they were kind of spamming it because there were like three or four, and so I imagine they were over in their group. There was like a post made about my post, I guess. And I didn't think we were reaching that many people, but um, there was a bit of a coordinated response um, and they all copied and pasted the same message and responded to everybody that wrote on our, um, our post. And so sweet, sweet Terry, thank you, Terry, for standing up for us <laughs> yeah. because she commented, she commented, great job, Myra, beautiful babies. And then she had this jerk JFK come on and say, um, these puppies are absolutely wonderful in our home and I should have saved it are wonderful in our home and they're so great. You should avoid places like this. And, and then they linked to their Facebook group. So we blocked them. <laughs> um, but because the, the, the whole adopt don't shop that originated with pet stores because puppy mill dogs were sold in pet stores. And so that's where the shop comes from adopt, you know, at a shelter, don't shop at Petland. Um, and so 
it's like very black and white, the anti-breeder people. They see it very black and white. Oh. And what they fail to see is um, with the abolition of pet store sales of puppies, um, a, the only good place to get a well-bred puppy is from a good breeder. Um, if you're looking for a puppy who has healthy genes, is socialized well, whose mom is mom and parents are taken care of in a good environment. Um, you know, how involved are you gonna be during the process while your puppy's growing up? Um that's the difference because not just going to a breeder doesn't make families, it doesn't make you morally corrupt because um there's just been with this shift with this like illegalization of puppy mills. Because 20 years ago, when this adopt don't shop thing started, um, the campaign started probably like 30 years ago now, um, the options were like shelters or a pet store with puppy mill puppies. And so, but we don't have, that's not the climate anymore. It's not pet store puppies and shelters. And then there were breeders in there. But um, now it's, you know, shelters, you know, and rescue groups. And then there's breeders. And then you have some like unscrupulous people. But um, there's going to be good breeders and there's going to be bad breeders. Um, most puppy mills did not just go anywhere overnight. A lot of them are trying to rebrand as breeders. Um, and and so you definitely need to ask all of your questions. Ask them how they, where their moms are, where their dads are. Um, you know, throw out a couple of scenarios. What do you do if? Um, do you allow, do you allow families to visit when when do you let us come over and hold our puppy? Um, because ever since COVID, a lot of breeders have, they never went back to allowing families yeah. in. It was like they they were given the green light to shut people out and be like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, COVID, we can't let you in the house. And then even after the lockdown and everything, they were like, oh, we kind of like this. Yeah, this <laughs> we thing. like not having families. Yeah, around. so. Um, oh. And so, um but anyway, so it's just it's it's kind of a, a logical fallacy that the doc don't shop isn't it doesn't really apply. Um, but on that note, the only place you're going to find a well-bred puppy, you know, puppies all puppies grow into dogs, and so if you want your family dog <laughs> to be a well-bred, be a well healthy dog, um, you know, you can always. Go to a rescue and rescue a dog that's, we will never, ever, ever fault you for that. Um, but one of the parts in un adopting a rescue dog is knowing that that dog might come with problems. Um, it's always possible that they did come from a breeder originally. But more often than not, um, rescue dogs usually came from shadier origins. Or they are just um, completely random. Ones. Yeah, or just random. Um, but um, so I think that's why the trolls get under my skin so much because they completely fail to recognize that breeders are where the good puppies come from. And if, if nobody's allowed to buy the good puppies that are health, the puppies that have been like health screened and parents have been screened and um, you know, where are you going to get them? Are we just supposed to all go to the shelters and only get the dogs that have been abandoned or dropped off um, with who knows what health issues. Um, and so that's why we started doing this when we did, because we were a family looking for an emotional support animal and we were looking for an emotional support animal. Um, I just realized I forgot to read Chris's update. <laughs> um, we were looking for an emotional support animal and we tried to find one in rescues. We tried to, we went to shelters too, actually. and. Um, we spent about a year, I think, trying to find the right dog, and they just, all of them had some sort of baggage, and we didn't want to bring a dog into our house that really needed their own individualized attention to be um, rehabilitated and learn to trust people again. Um, we needed a dog that was more ready for us to, because we needed the dog, and, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup, and it's still hold true. We dogs, you know, we don't want to take them in and immediately place all of this responsibility and 
overwhelming um, job on this dog that is just trying to learn to trust again. And so that's why we got into raising puppy essays because I thought, surely we are not the only family. I, oh, on that note, I did want to mention, I've seen a lot of ads really advertising um, support pets. And one really, really bothered me because the way they advertised it was like, what's wrong with ESAs and why ESAs get a bad reputation. But one of them advertised it as um, like, I'm looking for an apartment, but they said that they don't allow dogs. And so I asked my vet, how can I get around that? And the vet said, register it as an emotional support animal. And like, that's exactly why we have, they have such a bad reputation because that's not what they're for. <laughs> um, the ESA laws are designed to um, prevent owner and animal from being separated. And so the laws are in the Fair Housing Act um, and they come down to um, hotels cannot refuse their stay if they don't allow pets. And then the big one is that apartments and also hotels, but apartments cannot charge you like a monthly rent. Um, they can charge you a deposit because it's a deposit that they're planning to give back to you, um, but they cannot charge you a monthly rent for your pet um, if it's an emotional support animal. Um, but these folks who are going, um, who are doing the ESA thing just so that they can bring their dog in, that is not what it's for. And that's what gives them a bad reputation um, because that's really abusing the, the privileges. Um, uh, but I also wanted to say, you don't need to use those sites because they do add a lot of fees. And all you need for your dog to be an emotional support animal that is recognized, recognized legally by the FHA is um, a letter from your psychiatrist. Psychiatrists or um, a couple types of therapists, not every kind of therapist, um, but a couple different types of therapists. They have to have a certain um, credentials, um, but they can write a letter that says that you require an ESA to, um, as part of your like daily functioning. Um, and that is what makes your dog an ESA that legally covers them, um, your doctor just needs to sign it, um, but that that will legally cover you. You don't need to go and pay a hundred dollars to one of these websites. You can, so here's <laughs> another caveat: there is one website that Drew and I we do like um, because. Um, so I'll turn you. Increase this a little bit. There's one support site that we do like because um, what they do, their fees are not very high. But what they do is they set you up with a telehealth appointment. And so you go on there and you say, you know, this is me. This is my dog. Um, yes, I'm interested in setting up for the support letter thing, the ESA letter. And you have a telehealth appointment with a psychiatrist and you talk to them and, you know, explain what your dog is for. And and they will write the letter for you and then you'll have your letter. Um but if you have a psychiatrist, there is no need to pay for one of these telehealth appointments because you can just you can just call their office and say, hey, this is I have this dog that I want to have a letter for. Could you write me one and I'll pick it up? It's that easy. Um, you don't need to fill out forms and um, it's it's very simple. So don't let those sites or those ads make you think yeah. that there's a big process to it. But there's not. Oh, thank you. Ah. Give me a little doggy some fun dip. I'll get it the last one. No, don't bring them all in here. Just, we no. gotta, huh? No. The last. Bull? Oh. Yeah. I'm gonna put this in here. Okay. Um, but I was really disappointed to see that little ad for, um, that support website. And I, I don't, first of all, I don't think any vet would say, if somebody comes in and says, my apartment won't allow pets, what do you recommend? And most vets won't respond by saying, register them fraudulently as an ESA. Most vets are not going to say that. Most vets would probably recommend finding an apartment that is okay with your pet because there's so many things that can happen um, that, you know, they're not planning for, you know, if they don't allow pets. And I lived in an apartment once that wasn't, they didn't allow pets. But I had a little cat that I loved. And she was real small and quiet. So I thought I could just sneak her in. And I was wrong because she sat in the window of our apartment 
oh, like whenever we weren't there, she went up to the window. And so when you were pulling in, you could see her up at the window. And so I was like, oh God, you're going to get us in trouble. And then we had to call the maintenance guy one day. And so I called the, um, the office and I was like, yeah, we need um, maintenance to come down and take a look at this. And she was like, okay, that's fine. You know, he can be here, you know, at tomorrow at two o'clock. And um, I told her that would be great. And we were about to hang up and she goes, oh, just real quick. Is the cat going to be there? Because <laughs> they wanted to know, like, you know, is, is the cat going to run out? And, you know, they would just want to make sure the cat was okay. And so I just thought that was kind of funny because I'm sure there was like, maybe not back then, but there were probably fees that we were not paying. So um, I don't recommend taking your animals somewhere where they are not allowed if you don't have the proper documentation. Um, but no! also only register your ESA as an ESA if they are an ESA. The broken half. Oh no, that's all right. You can still lick it. Um, I wanted to read Chris's update. Oh, I got so sidetracked because I opened um, Safari onto my Facebook so post. I'm glad you like it. And saw John F. Kennedy there. Oh. Okay, so. There's one update from Day of Delivery that I didn't read. Um, he says, busy, busy, busy today. So I'll keep this short and sweet. Our little Amelia is still full of energy, fun, and love. Not hungry in the least, though. We usually get her to eat when she should, what she should, but it isn't without a fight. We've been getting all kinds of great tips with things that other picky eaters eat, and we appreciate it so much. We're staying in very close contact with the vet, though, because we can't risk an infection or allergies flaring up. We are writing them all down and saving them for later, though, just in case she stays a very finicky eater. I thought I would share Amelia's spot when Jane is doing schoolwork or playing on her laptop. It is probably the cutest thing. Jane has a drawer with blankets in it that she opens, and Amelia curls up and cuddles in it. Oh, I need to do the screen share. That's what I need to do. So I can show you guys the photos of her. Oh, but some of you guys have issues seeing the screen share, so I'll just show you here. Oh, there's her drawer. There's her drawer with blankets. Okay, and so you see how you guys can see my phone screen like this? And, you know, back in the old days, whenever we would be recording a screen, like a computer screen or a TV screen, it would have those wavy, um, you know, blurry lines. And so it's because they have LCD screens now. And that's the thing about FaceTime with the puppies is um, because the screens are different, they can see your face now. They can make it out. They can see that with their eyes. Um, because a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some families have asked us, like, are you sure they can even see us? Um, and yeah, they, they can see you. They can definitely see you. There we go. There she is. What a good girl, Amelia. She looks so happy. Okay, I'm going to say hello to some of you guys, and then I'm going to read today's update. Or maybe it was yesterday's. Hi, Anne. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Letty. Happy Easter to all of you. Hi, Caitlin. Cynthia, how are you? Hi, Sherry. Yeah, look out for dogs for me to take to nursing homes. Will do. Oh, thanks for joining us, Eve. I'm reading your um, comment about the pet store. About the two tiny pug puppies, all oh, poor guys. Hi, Lori. Hi, Sally and Beth. It's nice to see you guys. Shelly, how are you? Hi, Diana. Diana and Kelly and Brenda. Oh my goodness. I saw your uh, profile picture a little bit bigger and Brenda is so cute. So is Kelly, but I mean, I've, I've seen Kelly before, but that's the first time I've seen Brenda. She is adorable. Hey, Jean, Jean and Charlotte. Hmm. 
Zoe, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Michelle and Vicky. Hi guys. Belly rubs, how are you? Late dawn, I hope you're doing well. Paula and sunshine. Seas, how are you? It's so nice to see all of you guys. Thank you for joining us. If I missed anybody, I am really, really sorry. I, I don't think I did. Lori, did I say hi to you? I can't remember. If I didn't, thank you for joining us and happy Easter. Um, there were some other things. I, oh, another thing I wanted to mention. Um, so when she started, when she went into labor and I started the live stream, we had so many people on, most we've ever had on before was like 130. <laughs> and when I looked up and saw that we had like 235 people on, I'm an anxious person and like Drew is my rock <laughs> and he wasn't in here. And I got so anxious that like my mind just blanked and I had planned to talk about all these different things. And I was going to um, show you guys like our bedroom setup so you could see how, because um, what we like about our bedroom is how Myra can step in and out of the pool and she can do whatever she wants. She can continue living as a pet. Um, she's got her puppies right here where they're safe and sound, but she can jump out. She can roll on the floor. She can jump in bed. She can get belly rubs. She can go outside. She can hang out, you know, in another room. Um, she doesn't usually choose to, but as the puppies get older, she will. Um, and giving her that freedom, um, really helps reduce the burnout down the line. Um, usually by about two weeks, um, post birth, if the mom has not been like getting out of the pool and taking breaks and, um, you know, letting her puppies sleep for a little while while she goes and takes time to herself, they get burnout really bad. And, um, with her first litter that happened and she spent every moment with them and we had to carry her outside to go potty. Um, and then as soon as she came back in, she was right back in the pool. Um, and so when that happens, we try to force, we'll pick her up and we'll put her in the bed and we'll give her a belly rub. And we did that last time, but she was, and she, she obliged, but she was, like we'd be snuggling her up in the bed and she was just uncomfortable. She was obviously worried about her puppies and she was just, um, but she did get burnt out. And by, um, we had to make sure she was coming back to the pool and rolling over and nurse because when they start going out, they will refuse to let them nurse. Um, actually Missy can be really bad about that. Um, but they, it's like, they just, they go on strike. And so uh, sometimes some moms, we will have to bring them back in here and force them to feed the puppies. Um, when I say force, I don't mean like, you know, holding them down. Um, I just mean like, you know, we'll have to call her in. She won't do it willingly. We'll have to call her in here. We'll tell her to sit and we'll have to, you know, arrange her. She, she won't take it upon herself to lay down and put her belly up and let them, let them eat. Um, and so, um, we try to, you know, as soon as the delivery is over, we try to let her be, let her live as normally as she does. And so she just continues being a pet. Um, I've seen, they have like, um, they sell these big, like whelping stations and it's made so that like the mom can step out and step away from bees and be next to them. And they're really nice. But it wouldn't work in our bedroom because it looks like it's meant more for like a utility purpose um and it just seems a lot it's kind of cold like it just seems it doesn't it's not made in such a way where its intended purpose is for the mom to be able to leave the puppies and you know continue living her life a little bit just like you know when we take a newborn baby home we still have to make dinner. We still have to go to the bathroom. We still have to shower. We still have to go to sleep at night. We still do things. We still have to change our clothes. Um, and so it's the same thing for dogs or, you know, we try to make it the same way for our moms that just because she had puppies doesn't mean she just in here, you know, being a milk machine, taking care of her puppies and only that we want to still let her 
be her. Like she still has her own identity as Myra, the mama dog. Um, and they just do a lot better when, when we don't forget that. Um, I read in, in my, my Bible right here. Um, this, this book is so awesome. I love this book. But it talks about how when, especially younger moms, when it's their first or third letter, um, when they have their puppies, sometimes some folks, the breeder, will, you know, be focusing on them. And, you know, you admire them. They're so sweet. But mama may start to worry that you like her puppies more than her. And so we make a big deal about making sure that, like, if we come to tend to the puppies, we try to say hi to Myra first, and then we'll see the puppies. And then before we leave, we'll give her a pet. Um, we try to make her the priority or the, um, she is like, she takes care of the puppies. And so she needs us to take care of her. And so we want her to see that, like, our job really here is to support her. and. Um, we don't want we don't want her to think that um, we love any of her puppies more. So um, uh, that's part also part. It helps to um, when we do the belly rubs and stuff when we bring her up in bed and we give her all that individualized attention. Um, without the puppies, that's really helpful too. But luckily, we've never seen a a mom who has seemed to think that we like her puppies more. But apparently, it sounds like it can really become a problem. Like the mom will not want to take care of them if they think that you're liking them more like almost like a jealousy kind of thing um it's said though that dogs can't experience jealousy the emotion the way that we experience it so there's that um i realized though when i got so nervous on um, during the delivery stream i got so anxious and my mind blanked that i forgot to share with everybody kind of like how we do this why we do it the way we do um, what makes us not a puppy mill? Because we got called a puppy mill. Um, so, um, and really when you're looking at a breeder, um, or even like all breeders are going, you know, these puppies, it would absolutely kill me if one of them ended up in a rescue or a shelter. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, a puppy wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us. And so for them to then be in a shelter would just, it would rip my heart out. Um, but they're also taking, they'd be taking up a space for another dog. And so um, that's why we were family. Um, and we also make sure our families know that please take the dog back. If anything ever happens for the lifetime of the dog, if six or seven years old, we will still take them back. Um, we, we would very much rather um, have one of our puppies back older and they can just be part of, part of our pack in, until it's to their time um, than having to go to a shelter. Um, and, you know, they might find a perfectly wonderful family at a shelter, but I don't want that. I don't want to count on that. Um, and I also feel like you know, we bred them. And so if the family that we found for them is finding themselves in a spot, unable to continue taking care of them, then that becomes, it goes back on us. That becomes our responsibility. Then it should not become the shelter's responsibility or a rescue's responsibility. And so families, if any of you are watching, and I know, I don't, not aware of any of you that um, are looking to give your dog back, but um, if that ever happens, it's a no questions asked sort of thing. We aren't going to grill you. You don't need to have a reason that, um, I think a lot of people feel like they need to have a good explanation. You don't have to have a good explanation. Bigger concern. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter the reason because happening is what's happening. And so why it's happening isn't really relevant. Just that, um, you just want to make sure that. You guys are comfortable just letting us know that this has to happen. You know, giving the dog up has to happen. And it doesn't matter why, just just that you let us know so that we, we can take the dog back instead of the dog needing to go somewhere else. Um, but with that said, 
we have heard that a lot of family members of our puppies' families would never allow such a thing to happen. And so we will also won't get in the way of it if, you know, your sister wants to take the puppy or the dog if, if something happens and you're unable to keep the dog. Um, but your sister wants to take the dog. Um, we just ask that you let us know so that we have an updated contact information because if a family ever comes to us and says, um, uh, pedal here, she's, she's got a heart murmur. She's only four. She's got a heart murmur. We want to be able to call you. We want to be able to contact the family that she's with and let them know, hey, her, your your puppy's litter mate um, was at the vet recently and they found this. So you might want to check it out. I want to mention it here, but um, and so that's why we want to make we want just want to know where the puppies are so that we can get a hold of you. Um, they're so they're so strong. They are so strong. Okay. Yeah, this is a pretty girl. This is a very pretty girl. She's got the, she's like Myra where she's got the the color all down her cheeks, yeah. all the way up to her nose. Oh, oh isn't she cute? She's a pretty pie. Oh. What are we calling her again? Petal. Petal. That's right. She is a pretty petal. She's a very pretty. And then we've got avocado. I love that. Ella did a good job. Avocado. Hey, avocado. Hey, buddy. Hi. His little thumbprint right there reminds me of Vienna's. I know. So stinking cute. Man, he's cute. Oh, how cute is he? I know. I love his, like, how the coloring is really, like, up on his upper back. And then he's got a pretty, like, I love how his booty. shoulder is just all dark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So pretty. For some reason, I see that, and to me, it looks like he's muscular. Like, he's, oh yeah, <laughs> he's flexing. And he is the biggest one of the group. He is nice and big and strong and healthy. Oh, his um, yeah, yeah it fell off. Um, and he's got the color coming up his cheeks too. See, oh big yawn. Oh, big. See, see, look at all my color, my pretty boy. <laughs> Miss Panda was a little shy for the thumbnail this morning. Oh, she Ms. was Panda. underneath. Um, she was underneath Myra. Little Panda. Hi, Panda we did have Panda. a giant goose, and we, but they were all crawling underneath the goose's arm, the wing, and so it wasn't making such a good picture. <laughs> How pretty is she? I love her tail. It looks like a yin yang. She turned a nurse on you. Yep. <laughs> So I'm hungry. I'm hungry. So, oh, I'm a pretty girl. I am a pretty girl. Pretty, she is a pretty girl. They're all so beautiful. They're so active. And she's got um she's got Myra cheeks too. <laughs> she does. She's got Myra cheeks. Yeah, no no white, just color she's all the way down to the all the way down to the their lips, to their jowls. To your little jowls, huh? Oh, you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, but you know, he's just Aww. like <laughs> looking in the side of the nipple. Cappuccino. It's like, I am, oh, I'm a full boy. Look Holy at Holy cow, look at that belly. Look at that full belly. That is a full belly. Oh, his, uh, his umbilical came yeah. off too. Look at that full belly. You're so stinking cute. You're so stinking cute. So we're calling him this guy Cappuccino. Cappuccino. Yep, Cap for short. Yep. That was another really good recommendation. Cappuccino. He's so dark. He's so pretty. They are so soft. Yeah. Um, Myra and, and her sister, Myra, she's, um, her fur is exceptionally soft. It's like her puppy, her puppy softness never really, um, went away. Yeah. And, um, oh, and it's so, she's so soft right here. Um, but her puppies are way softer they're, they're... than... Like her, any litter I've ever felt her, before. Her and Macchiato put together. I don't like. I don't know how they. It's an incredible combination. It's like silk. It's, it's rose. I love her mouth. She yeah. does look like she's got lipstick. Yeah, on. it looks like she has lipstick on. Like she's gonna give you a big old kiss. <laughs> <laughs> a chef's kiss. <laughs> oh my god, Jen! <laughs> Ooh. I'm sorry, I was being loud. Like in the camera, it really does look like she's puckering up. 
She's so they're all so active. Yeah, hi, sweetie. And it's perfectly it's like perfectly centered that that her little Oh, I'm sorry. Good girl. What a good girl you are. I'm so sweet. Um, John, it's funny you say that because I was actually thinking about latte for her. Oh, yeah. Um, and we also liked the suggestion of beans yeah. for coffee beans. Um, except that with this puppy being the Bella baby, um, oh. in other words, the second born female, um, every litter, Bella needs to know who the second born female is because she's the second born female. And so that's the Bella baby. Um, and so she reserves rights to name, nickname, collar, color, um, you name it, pretty much all the way up until go home day. She picks everything. She picks out the toys in their bag. She picks their blanket on the, the Bella baby gets all the attention from Bella. Um, and so she originally named her um, first name, Anna, middle name, Bella, last name, Warren. <laughs> um, but. Bella's real name is first name Annabella, middle name Rose. And so we're calling her um, Rose yeah. for short so that we're not calling her Annabella Warren. Yeah, so this is this is Rose. Yeah, we're calling her Rose. Yeah. So she's sweet. Rose. And since she's given oh, those, she is so cute. Look at those little... Get over the, the, the kissy face. I know. Mwah. Panda makes me smile. Did her, didn't I? That's everybody. Avocado, are you full? Look at him. Look at him splutin'. Oh, he's, he's splutin'. That are big you boy splutin'. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He says, oh, boy, I gotta sploot because I can't lay any other way. Like, oh, don't push my dummy. Don't push my dummy. Oh. Um, we still gotta decide on a reservation day. I thought we were gonna. I thought we said we were gonna do it on a Saturday, or we we're gonna make a poll. Yeah, I know. That's what I was saying we still gotta decide. Yeah, you want to do a poll and see if people would like that? Um, I'm just not sure if I should do it uh, as the live or if I should do it in a community post. Oh. I mean, I suppose I can just we'll set up a poll on the live stream. It's just that um, you know viewers might not know what works right. for families. Right. Um, I'm gonna start a poll <laughs> and. Drew and I, so reservation day is always two weeks when they turn two weeks old. Um, except that with this litter, two weeks is going to be on a Thursday. And for folks who are working or um, we wanted to find out if you guys would prefer Friday um, or even Saturday so that it's the weekend. Um, but we don't want to decide since it's not us. We I mean, know we're here. We're going to be here Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Um, so we wanted to find out from you guys what you would prefer. The only advantage to keeping it on Thursday is that it's real easy communication. Everybody understands, um, because it's just two weeks from when they were born. But I, so I don't want to confuse anyone. That's kind of like the only issue. But if everybody agrees that they would all prefer Saturday, then, um, then yeah, we would rather do it on Saturday if that's going to be easier for everybody. So um, I am going to start that poll. Don't feel like you have to respond. Um, but if you um, kind of know what maybe some of the other people are thinking, then by all means, feel free to vote. Um, oh, Sherry says Saturdays are better. I believe it's April. Be April eleventh.
there it is. I was like, oh no, what happened to it? Did it go away? But I, all right, I just posted the poll. So if you um, have an opinion, please feel free to vote. That would be really helpful for us. Um, Drew and I have gotten a lot better on reservation day. We are able to get through the requests much more quickly. Um, and it's kind of nice having the live on alongside reservations because we can update everybody on how things are moving. Um, nails. I sorry, I sorry, I sorry. Hey, Dad, I'm kind of surprised because it looks like we're not going to need to trim fur. Uh, what? Need to trim fur. Trim her fur? Yeah. Because she's like, lost enough that... Well, it's just that the puppies are, they've gotten a little bit bigger and better at dealing with their fur. And also, I think it's because um, we're not having to work so hard to latch, like, weak puppies. Uh -huh. Which is what, it would be really annoying holding it back all the time. They're managing all right. Oh my goodness, you are so cute. Stop that just in time. Oh, good girl, Myra. That's like, so <laughs> when moms, there's like a certain way they have to learn to lay because whenever dogs lay on their sides, if she was just laying on her side, like how she relaxes as an everyday family dog, um, her nipples would be kind of facing down. And so when they're nursing, they always have to kind of like roll a little bit more and pull this, this arm out from under the, them. A lot of times we'll have to pull their other nipples really out help? so that they can reach these bottom ones. Um, and Myra uh, was notorious with her first litter for never doing that. She, Whenever we would try to help her pull her arm out, she would always pull it back. And then she would like try to bend over and she would be reaching around trying to um, like fix it herself. But it's just when they don't pull this arm out and expose these other nipples, it makes it so that you can only really, puppies can only access like this one, this one, and this one, because everything else is just kind of facing the floor or facing her head. Um, there's no good spot for the puppy to place themselves. So um, that's why I was giggling when she did that because she didn't, she never did that with her first letter. Probably why Daisy had to nurse them. But, uh, oh, and Daisy pottied them all earlier, and Myra was, was sitting with them, too, and 
it went really well. I decided, um, Daisy, she's so respectful of Myra's puppies. And she won't approach them on her own. She only will do it if I have her. And so I decided to bring her over because um, she's so excited for them. She looks at them and she just wags her tail. Um, so I brought her over and what I did was I um, picked them up and I gave them to Myra to give kisses. And then I brought them over to Daisy so Daisy could give them kisses. And Myra was totally fine with Daisy kissing them. And so then I let Daisy potty them, which Myra was still good with. And what was really sweet is that um, Daisy was pottying them. And then Myra got a little bit closer and she started kissing their faces. And so then I had Myra over here licking their faces and Daisy over here pottying them. And it was really sweet. I think that Myra is um, realizing that Daisy can be quite helpful. Um, I give it a few days before Daisy is like in here alongside Myra nursing, <laughs> nursing two or three of them while Myra's nursing the others. Are you okay? No, that's not enough to get trade. When did you guys do that? Mom there? Um, well, yeah. You might need to go and I'll let you handle it since it's too big of a meeting. Yeah, we need them for we need them for Easter. Uh, I was gonna watch the car. Uh, but, but there's more. There's more. There's one. There's one. What's that, Bella? Little Those little ones? Uh, these are these are all diamonds. What diamonds? Diamonds are ten cents. Ten? Yeah. You're is such a ten? good mama. You're such a good what mama. Is? Yes, you Here's are. One. Five? These are ten? Yeah, these are ten. One cent is a penny. Those are like pennies? One cent. What's why I have this much? No. What's why I have all of them? What if I had all of them? What if I had all of them? What if I had all of them? Uh, what if I had all of them? What if I had all of them? All of the coins. How much was that? How much would it be? Right here. I don't know. Ten million? No, that's not. Ten thousand? No, they're not. There you go. It, Maybe like. No, it's just like latching a baby. What if I had what? Just... All that one, lactation, one, all the lactation one, consultant nine. meetings and one, whatever nine, that I seven, did when seven, I was seven, a new mom is all coming in handy. What if I had ten pennies? Ten pennies, I could trade the ten pennies for nine. What if you had ten? Ten pennies. And you could trade that for 100 pennies. No, Take that one. Your dragon back. Your own bed. Yeah. Your necklace is gone. your aunt now dragon, Bella? That's special. That was the name of your mystery one. No, I don't like dragons. Remember, guys? No. Right, that, that's what I'm trying to explain, though, is that you can't really know. Fine if you don't want it, but if you decide that you want to put that, okay. That's all I'm trying to say. You change your mind. All right? But you don't have to, is what I'm trying to say. Okay? 
trying to make a trade, okay? Okay. But I just want you to tell me. I know you're really happy with this. Ouch. Oh. Dude. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. 
This is our resident uh, canine nanny, or our doggy doula, as we like to call her. You're a good girl. Um, she, Daisy, loves puppies. She loves when she has her own puppies. She loves when other moms have puppies, and she's like nearly obsessive about, especially when they're other moms' puppies. Um, I shared, or, um, I think during the delivery live stream that, um, last fall when we had three moms had litters, like all within a week of each other and Daisy adopted two of those litters and she began lactating an entire supply of milk to feed both litters. It was absolutely astonishing. It was so unbelievable. Um, but she just climbed into the pool. She started climbing in. She would sneak in when Myra was sleeping. And so she would tiptoe in and then she would just like curl up in a little ball, like right here. And Myra would sleep through it and the puppies would kind of be right here. And so the puppies would start snuggling up to her and um, she started lactating. They would um, like suckle on her nipples a little bit. And that little bit like created a whole chain reaction. And Myra is. Diana, come back. I just, she went outside and I just put her out. Isn't like, I just opened the door and walked this way. I brought Daisy down to see the puppies and... I know, she, she runs out, she does a business and comes right back. Let me give Daisy a minute and then I'll... Okay. Do you want to let the other dogs out, maybe? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, actually. You see, Myra, with her first litter, she burned herself out so bad that we were hoping that Daisy might actually be of benefit to Myra if she's able to help her with her puppies maybe a little bit younger than her first litter. Um, so her first litter, Myra's first litter, Daisy kept her space for longer. Um, we didn't let her sniff them and meet them this early. Daisy, get out of the can. Daisy. You all done? You all done? Are you done with the puppies? Or did you think Myra was coming in? She's not coming in yet. You want to say hello? Myra's outside, sweetie. It's okay. You're a good girl. You are such a good girl. Mm. Girl. Well done, her. Yep. You done? Good girl, Daisy. Panda, you need a body. Good 
girl, Daisy. You're such a good mommy. You're a good girl. You're a very good mama. Oh, Petal, you found Daisy. <laughs> Daisy's not so sure about you just yet. They're there. They move a lot for being this young. They don't usually move. They're not usually exploring this much. So I think Daisy's almost like a little nervous that wondering why they're moving as much as they are. Can you hear that? He says, hi. Hi, Auntie Daisy. Hi, Auntie. I think the puppies love you. Anybody that potties them when mom's not here. You're a good auntie. You all done? You're a good girl. Come here. You're a good girl. Is it time to get Myra? You can bring Myra in. Yeah. No. No, Vienna. Let's see. Door. Come on. Come on. Come on, dogs. Come on, dogs. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. Come on. Come on, dogs. You're a good mama. You're a good mama. You bark and don't go away. Yeah, you're a good mama. Daisy was barking for you too. Daisy was growling actually. She was growling at all those intruders. Bella opened the bedroom door and saw her. it was cracked and the dogs all came rushing in when she was bringing them in from outside. Let me get those poopers. You're a good girl. You are a good girl. Yes, you are. I do. You are such a good mommy. Yes, you are. Look at how strong your puppies are. They're already navigating to you. I guess she's been doing this since the beginning. She's so strong. If we hadn't kept Mocha, we would be keeping her. <laughs> We'd also be keeping her if we hadn't brought home Heidi. This litter is absolutely gorgeous. Robin's litter was the same way, where almost every single puppy 
was one that we would easily rationalize keeping. But we can't keep keeping all of our puppies because that kind of defeats the purpose of what we're doing. Sorry, I can't run and wash the car, so. Running and washing the car is going to take how long? I'm just going to go down that lane. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to Bloomington. No. Um, so far, we have 73% saying Saturday. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. a nice uh, distribution. Yeah, I'd say that's a. How many people? There's 26 votes, yeah. Uh, that'll work well, and then they'll be 16 days old, and yeah. the timing will work nicely. I think. Well, Cause it's I feel like on reservation day we almost need like two more days. Yeah, I need like a little bit more time. They, that two weeks. Yeah, it's like that two week mark is when they really explode, yeah. and so I feel like we do videos, then they explode, yeah. and then we have reservations. Well, and um, like the first couple of days. Or like this, like yeah, they, like they don't do a whole heck of a lot, so you're not really getting two weeks of seeing the puppies and their their personalities. But um, yeah, well, I, I kind of figured that Saturday would be a third day. Yeah, good call on making that adjustment. Yeah. Um, wait. Um, when you let the dogs in and they all came to the door, yeah. Myra stood up and she was barking at everybody. Oh, I don't know if you heard, but it was like an interesting bark because it was a little more alarming. And then Daisy, so Myra's sitting there barking. And I just had this little like bonding session with Daisy and Myra and you know, the puppies. And um, so Daisy, Myra's sitting there barking, and Daisy's almost like shoulder to shoulder with her. Right here, growling. Oh, and really? so yeah, I think Myra kind of felt united with Daisy in that. Wow. Yeah, but she's she's perfectly okay being brushed aside as long as she can still protect them. Yeah. Like, I'll just protect them from over here. Uh, I well, I think she's still kind of like nervous to get too close. I think she's still being respectful. But um, Vienna and Mogo were jumping up on the bed, so I think she was also kind of I feel like just felt like she was kind of like defending that part of the room.
the deck. Hey there, Boris. How are you doing? Happy Easter. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by. Myra and puppies are all doing really, really well. Everybody, except for her, everybody lost a little bit of weight on their first 24 hours. But last night when I was doing their 48 hour checks, um, almost all of them had regained nearly well all of them did nearly regain everything i think the let's see. so miss petal she had she lost she originally lost um eight and then yesterday she was up eight from birth weight so she was born at 192 then she went down to 184 and then yesterday, she had surpassed her birth weight and went all the way up to 200. So she is eight above her birth weight. Our Mr. Cappuccino here. So he was born at 198, 24 hours. He had lost 20 and he was at 178. And last night, he was back up to 196. So he's at a net negative of two. Um, Miss Panda right here. So she was born at 188, 24 hour check in. She had lost 10. And yesterday, when I did her check, she had regained 186. Um, so um, also just too shy of her birth weight. And then we have Rose over here. She was born at 170. Her 24 hour check, um, she was 174. So she was up four. And then yesterday, she gained um, another, six, another 14. So she's 188. So she is 18 over her birth weight. Um, Mr. Avocado here, he was born at 218. He's the biggest in the whole litter. Um, but 24 hours in, he lost 20 and was down to 198. Um, and yesterday when I did his weight check, he, um, was back up to 202. So he was back up. He didn't lose more. Um, but he's still, um, about 16 below his birth weight. But um, his birth weight, everybody's birth weight, um, all the weight they packed on in utero was Myra's doing. That was her body. And so when they're born and they shift into the outside world, their only nutrition now is coming from milk that they have to eat. Um, it's not just Myra packing calories in. Um, and so it's shifting from it being done for them. to now they have to work for it. And so, you know, it's, 218 may have been a little high for him. Um, you know, if Myra was just giving him constant sustenance and calories, and now when he is, now when it's up to him to nurse and get those calories, um, you know, that may have been a little bit more than what he's even able to consume. So um, the fact that he lost 20 and then gained four tells me that that may have been like a little equalization there. Um, I don't know if 218 is what he needs to get back to as a plate. I mean, obviously he'll go past that, but um, I think that he may have been almost like a little high for his birth weight. Because um, all the puppies are right around 200, which is a really healthy birth weight for Cavaliers. Um, usually our Cavaliers, because we have some petite mamas. Um, Cavaliers are oftentimes born at only like 150 grams. Um, like when we have runts of the litter, that 150 grams is really small. Um, and they're usually pretty weak. And so they usually require a lot of extra care. And But they're usually very energetic. Like they still have a lot of vigor in them. But that's like 
150, 160 is a pretty normal size at delivery for them. Um, but you can't go much below that because once we've had a puppy born like 145, and I think we had one born at like 128. Um, it was last fall we had, I can't remember which one he was. Um, last fall we had one born with a really, really low weight. Maybe it was previous to that. He was born with a really, really low weight, and we expected him to be a runt. Why am I I'm thinking it's Henry the Osho? But um, that was a robin puppy, and um, he was born really small, but he wasn't a runt. He didn't have trouble eating or anything. He was just really tiny. Hi there, Jane. How are you? Happy Easter. Hi, Paula and Sunshine. Oh, I'm so sorry. They ran out of German chocolate cake. Oh my gosh. That, that cake is so good and Drew doesn't like it. I can't believe it. Um, but we are very curious. We want to know which day works best for you guys for reservations. Um, because we go by first come, first serve, um, we want you to be able to talk to us. We want you to be able to um, reach for your phone, and we want you to be not be busy with other things. We try to want to do it during a time when most people are free or can make themselves free. So um, it, it won't make a lick of difference to us. Um, the only difference might be that the kids are home from school and that's about it. But we'll be doing the very same thing on each day at the same time. Um, and so it really, it literally does not make a difference to us. Um, and so if one of those days works better for you guys, we would we would want to switch that up. Yeah. Oh, Sally, I see your question about a runt. Um, my understanding of a runt puppy is usually yeah, it's the smallest puppy in the litter. Um, and you can have a small puppy that's perfectly healthy. Um, and I mean, like those puppies will usually refer to them as runt tea. Um, we won't call them the runt usually unless they are struggling. Usually it is a puppy that is smaller, that um, because of their size, they're weaker. They have a harder time suckling. And, um, and if you don't pay attention to that, it can snowball pretty bad because if they're weak and they're not suckling very much and they're not getting as much milk, they're still going to grow a little bit over those couple of days. They're going to grow. And so if they were weak to begin with, then when they grow a little bit and they put on a little bit more weight, it's then becoming harder to move around because they're heavier. And then it's also harder to nurse. And so that's why we try to intervene and we will syringe feed and bottle feed um, if we need to, so that we can get, give them their strength back. Um, and then we also have um, some little We have this stuff, which is fantastic. It's called Nurse Mate. Um, it gives them, for any puppies, especially runts, um, it is a, there's like a little, you can see the little measurement thing right there. Um, but it's like a super concentrated um, gel with tons of calories and nutrients. And it's really incredible because we'll have a runty puppy and we just put a little bit of this on their tongue, like a little drop. And they'll eat it, and um, after they after they consume this, they get like this burst of energy. It's really incredible. They get this burst of energy, and it provides a great opportunity to 
get them on to nurse and have them nurse while they have that big burst of energy. And so then they can get some calories in them in addition to what is already in here. But this stuff is incredible. We found this um, not too long after we started breeding, but it's almost it's been a lifesaver for some puppies because when they're that little and they're that touch and go, um, something like this can make or break whether or not they survive. So um, little puppies, it's very, um, it can be very, very touch and go. But this stuff is huge, 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 huge. We've got a whole bunch of these. So if we should need them for these guys, we have them. Hmm? I need a baggie. Yeah. You need a baggie for your for your bunny. Oh, is it flop? Yeah, for your bunny. No. Oh, what for? My candy necklace. Oh. One that Rai gave me. I need it. I didn't eat all of it. Hey, I'm right. I'm gonna do a smiley face. Smiley face. Look, a bubble. Meow. Mom, oh, it stayed in. Yeah. Watch. Come watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can flip it all the way around and it'll stay. Ooh. Ah, it's a little scary. Last one did stay. You're supposed to be. Mom, I need a walk back here. No, no. I didn't get it. Yes. It's a lock bag. Hey, what do you say? Huh? What do you say when you ask for somebody to do something? Please, you can get the walk bag. Thank me. you.
I'm getting hot over there, Myra. Oh, Caitlin, I've seen I've seen that Ben Back stuff. Yep, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, I think the supplier we use has it in a couple different formulations, but you can get it in the the gel, the tasty gel.
Mr. Tapia is going to struggle as well. I love you too. I ate our candy. Good job. Mom, cotton candy melts from water. 
That's fine, but do you have any in your drawer?
The self service guy was broken, so I just went through the automatic one and it did a decent job. And then I just turned it into the self service bay and then like wiped it all down. And the car turned out really pretty good, like it looks nice in the sun sunlight. So, okay. take some quick photos. That's a good deal. Because it'll be like, she's fantastic. It'll be like, well, you're feeling like I'm there. Actually, I, well, I want them. <laughs> she was trying to, like, she was she's trying imitating. to block them. Yeah, she was being. <laughs> yeah. 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 So serious. She was. wasn't specific to John Barry. She never said so. Yeah, um, and, <laughs> and so she said that we could take her to the um, but unless of her just now, um, First, I was like, oh, wait, if I get you don't want to do And she was like, no, 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 no. And then I was like, that was one example. And I love her. And I was like, I get to do it. Do it because I am. Do you want to play with them? like a little boy. Yeah, so you two. <laughs> Nobody knows that that was that's not like no the car one. <laughs> Big secret. Not dad is not supposed to. I see what you I see her issue with it. She just wanted to have her instant take it. Being the youngest child, that I remember feeling like that. And that's kind of hard to get to figure out that. Because your older siblings always think that they get to decide how things are going to be. Because they never feel like really anything will be up to you because you know that your older siblings can tell you what to do. 
they, they can pull you into it and if mom and dad don't want to come then Don't tell her that. Oh. 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 Can you see? Who are my face caps? Yes. Okay. One of pops. Oh, that's right. Can you put the other one in the freezer for like 15 months? What's up? It's already in there. Can you cool it off in the fridge for 15 months? So you don't want it frozen? No, I do not want it frozen.
that in here? No. Is he outside? Come on, look. Oh, that's very cute. I can't see it that well because my vision's pretty bad right now. I think I broke it. No, don't jump rope with that bell. Okay. Okay, go find out. I think he's in the kitchen. He's outside. Oh, oh, you know what? He is outside. If you grab your flip flops, you can. Your flip flops are right over here. What? Right We're going to do it once my vision's better. Can we do it without you? Can we do it without you? Watch out! I'm going to hurt you, Let's try to hold the ball, baby. Coins in your Easter eggs? Yes. Not oh, only in one, because it can be special. Huh? Only in one, because because it's supposed to go like that. So, Myra! But what if we have dollars, too? $100. And I didn't say we had $100. No. Mom, mom, I only know one wrong with mom and money. Do you know? Money and mom. Only one rhyme money and mom. You know? Well, we're not going to do this right now because I, I can't see it very well. So I'm um, doing my vision. So um, I think Dad's probably going to need Mom's help. Whoa. Push your bum. Push your bum. Mom, can I have a lolly? Those are all the games. Mom, can I have a lollipop? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mom, I'm having this one. There we go. Does it have bubble gum in How it? What are you doing, sweet my Mom, does this have bubble gum in it? Mom, does this have bubble gum in it? 
I'm not sure. Hi, sweetie. You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. You want a belly rub? Mom, do one purple, and it has a lot of scents. Do one purple. I'm gonna keep it a surprise. You're not gonna tell me how to do it. Please, can the kids tell them you want to have to do it? Please, Mom. <sighs> Oh no! Yeah, I pulled a wrapper out of there. I'm curious where the wrapper was that it belonged to.
Yeah, I'm still working on this. I just need a little block for my for my body. Okay. Is there any for me? Hmm? Is there any for me? Any what? I need the block bag. Um Oh, for now, I would just keep it in that bag because that's a good storage bag for now. And we're we gonna flip it. Right. Well, we'll have to look for one that's big enough. Okay. I'll talk to Bradley. Let me talk to Bradley, okay? Hi. Uh, because you know, I can be kind of grumpy sometimes. Gumballs. Gumballs. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the gumballs. Okay. Not one you're working on.
You want to do that in the house? Oh, I thought we would do it outside. It looks like there's a storm coming in this way. Here's what I do on this anyway. Colors and then yeah. there's a golden egg. The golden egg says you know there to well, give it to us because we have a decent place on high signature. And then also Not really. Yeah, it's just, it's just right for a. Uh, all right, what else do you need done? I took basically all the recorders. Um, divided them between two. It's a big egg full of quarters. Then I have one that gets combined to get some type of a little bit of a little How much uh, do we just got to do? So, what eggs need to be done? Oh, and I also gave them the chocolate crumbles. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bradley doesn't. Doesn't. You think he does? I got, um, I had two left. It was perfect. So I have one for him. Well, that's because it's going to storm soon. Maybe that's it. I go a little while. We'll just do it then. Um, how many more do we need to do? Three for Bradley, two for Bill. There's ten total. One golden egg and then that. There was not an even number of eggs, and so I had to find the least common denominator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's who knew that that skill would ever come in handy. But I had to find the least common denominator of each of the colors to determine how how many eggs we could do in mm -hmm. one color. And at first I thought it was only seven. And so I was going to add one. Mm -hmm. um, 
two of them had eight, but then I found a number eight for green, and so, sorry, nine, we have nine. So we're going to put in any of these guys? Um, um, maybe just candy? So they, they've already gone through and picked what they want, basically, so they don't really... Um, well then, just want yeah, I mean, just want to pull, make one for Bradley and then pull two out, uh, or make. No, I'm just trying. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna make one for Bradley, pull out two. Points. Well, the, uh, so you just need to do. You don't need to do bellows because she already has two. Oh yeah, yeah. So just need to make one for Bradley. So since you pulled two out of maze, you just take one out of maze and put it under here. It's the thing that was they're perfectly like aligned. The only difference is that she has a gear deli chocolate. I mean I can put that in it. Oh, okay. You want to put a gear deli chocolate in for Bradley? Yeah. Oh, okay. Here, I'll give you one. Right. Um. Sorry, right, if I start a pot of rice, we'll kind of... Yeah, no, that's fine. Program those buttons to say things like that. So that would be really cool for Daisy. I think she would. I think she has to. No, Daisy, don't leave it. Are those empty? But, um, I don't think so. Yeah, I think if she. Have the ability to press the buttons to say great things, or we use things that we say commonly. You can understand the concept of love. Like, I love you. I think so because the context clues. Mm -hmm. You can get your own like an apartment state. Yeah. Oh, dude. It's always when you're super happy to see them. I love you. Yeah. No.
You can look. What? The eggs are all done. They're all done? Yep. We each have a color and then a golden egg. Oh. So you're going to get sweetie pie and all sorts of don't want to be on the blankets. I usually love blankets. Um, are we gonna do my our Easter outside or inside? Um, I think that um, Dad suggested doing it inside since it's looking like a storm's gonna head our way. Huh. Oh, are you gonna turn it up? We will. It's just I can't see real well right now. I found some straight away. I just love trying to organize the. How do they take the whole bellet? 
There's a box of the eggs. Hmm? There's a box of the eggs. I put it out on the dining room. Why? Bella, what are you doing? I have five my unicorn shoes. Oh, they're in your bedroom. I don't buy your sink, between your sink and your TV. They're not there yet. They're not there. Oh, Liza. I'll help you look when. Bella, you've got your other shoes over here. Oh, does it have to be your unicorn shoes?
see it. You see us playing a crazy surrogate mama with the puppies. Thank you. 
Looks like we have to cancel the egg hunt for today. Why? Dad said we can't. We have to wait until tomorrow because you have a one. Why would, why would we do it tomorrow? Because he said that you have to do it tomorrow because you have a one. I tell him that I just, I just need to play. I thought he just wanted to get the rice going. Tell him to give me like. Maybe 15 more minutes. Okay. Just tell him that yes, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to take this thing off and I'm going to find my sunglasses somewhere. And then, could you actually put my app back in the freezer for me? Um, yeah. And when you do that, just let Dad know that I'm planning to that on and stop this thing that come today.
Hello, uh, my baby. Got your dog or something there.
Elizabeth, are you going to eat in here or do you want to eat in there, baby? Um, I'll eat in here just to give my head a break so that I can do the Easter egg hunt.
After there. Good boys, good boys.
Who was playing with this? Was it Bell?